Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, taking photographs and recording video, of course, has become a key part of our everyday smartphone experience. And computational photography has enabled all kinds of amazing things that we can do with photography and with uh, video. And machine learning is kind of the killer feature of computational photography. So what do I mean by that? And what does it do for us? Well, if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. I would like to thank Qualcomm for sponsoring this video. Now, machine learning really is the killer feature of computational photography. What is computational photography? When you take a photo, when you record some video, you can apply some processing, some post-processing or some real-time processing that improves the quality or adds certain features. Now, with kind of normal uh, computational photography, you're applying an algorithm that changes something about the uh, data. So, for example, a filter that might make it warmer or colder, all those filters you get with kind of social media. Now with machine learning, we're able to add an extra layer of functionality, for example, object detection, object recognition, and so on. And really machine learning has enabled a whole new bunch of things that can happen inside the whole sphere of computational photography. Now the Snapdragon 888 contains a triple 14-bit ISP and a sixth generation AI engine from Qualcomm, which means it's ideally suited to use machine learning for computational photography and also for other things like how we watch our videos. Now the Snapdragon 888 contains a triple 14-bit ISP that's image signal processor. And that allows data, video and photography to come down from three separate sensors at the same time. And there's enough bandwidth for it to go into the processor and then through the sixth generation AI engine so that different computational photography and machine learning algorithms can be applied in real time to that data. Now here's a demonstration of the bandwidth of the Snapdragon 888 using the Galaxy S21 Ultra. And so here we're using the director's view on the Snapdragon uh, 20, S21 Ultra, and it shows that you can record from one of the rear cameras and from the front cameras, all that data is then flowing down into the chip. And then of course it's being joined together and then written out to a file. So we can see that the bandwidth is there. Now, if you're then able to capture in real time that data and it flows nice into the chip, then the AI engine can then do something with it. So we can see that the bandwidth is there. And in a moment, we're gonna see that the AI engine is also capable of processing that video in real time. Now at the heart of the sixth generation AI engine is the Hexagon 780 processor. Now it contains special hardware functionality for doing tensor and scalar operations. We won't go too much into the details, but when you're dealing with neural networks, a lot of stuff is to do with matrices and how you process those. Now, of course, machine learning can be applied on a CPU, can be done on a GPU, or it can be done on dedicated hardware like the Hexagon 780. Now when it's done on dedicated hardware, not only do you get the speed, but you also get the power efficiency. And that's what allows the Snapdragon 888 to apply real time machine learning algorithms to video feeds that are coming in through that triple 14 bit ISP. Now, one good example of using a triple ISP together with the AI engine is this idea of hybrid zoom. If you've got three different lenses, three different sensors, you know, wide, normal, and telephoto, then you would like to be able to zoom in between of these without there being too much jarring or too much jitter. And using the AI engine, what can happen is when it sees that the scene is just at the right point, you have to switch to the next one, keeping it as close as it can to the original in terms of the color, in terms of of the position in terms of the overall size, then the AI engine can say, right, now's the best time to switch over. And then you can do kind of as smooth as possible zoom between the three different lenses. Here's an example. So here I am on the OnePlus 9 Pro. It's got multiple lenses, multiple sensors, and you can use the machine learning capabilities of the Snapdragon 888 to do a hybrid zoom. So we can zoom in and go through the different camera lenses and then right up actually now into digital zoom, keep zooming in there and then zoom back out again as we go through the different optical lenses back out to the main uh, wide angled lens there. And that smoothness, keeping everything centered, keeping the colors the same is all done using the machine learning capabilities of the Snapdragon 888. And here's an example of the same thing using the Qualcomm Snapdragon for Insider's phone.
Now, when we talk about machine learning, we're talking about things like object detection. Is there an object I'm looking for in this scene? A person, an animal? Object recognition, what is that object that I have detected in this scene? An object outline, what is the outline of the person? What is the outline of the pet that you are videoing? Now, machine learning is, is really, really good at doing those things. And when you combine them with other techniques in computational photography, you get some really powerful features. Now, here's a demo of all those three things working at the same time on a Galaxy S21 Ultra. Okay, so here I am in the garden. I've turned on the portrait video mode. So this is video, so it's doing the processing in real time. And as you can see, I've turned on the black and white filter uh, for the background rather than blur, because look at this. When I go down now to my dog, there you go, color. This is the way this one works. It gives you color, color point, it's called. Okay, and look, it's doing this in real time. So it's doing object uh, detection outline and object recognition and then working out that's my dog and then letting that bit in color while the green grass on either side of her as you can see there is complete and we go back up here okay look at that and then we go back down to the dog look at that okay and that works on the back cameras really really well now the great thing about the ai capabilities of the snapdragon 888 is it can do this on the front camera with only one lens, so it's just relying on the video information it has, and then doing object detection, object recognition, object outline, and now I'm in color, but as you can see, everything else around me is in uh, is in black and white. And there are different modes, let's see if I can switch on a different mode here. This is the, uh, the glitch mode, there you go. You can see all that background like that, and then of course you can go with outer focus. So there you go, and you can change the intensity, so it doesn't look, there you go. There you go, nice outer focus. With, uh, with me they're doing just because of the AI capabilities. Another area where machine learning can be useful is taking photos and video in low light. So here's an example from the Xiaomi Mi 11 Pro. Now this was really, really dark, but yet taking a photo was able to bring out all of the stars you see here in the sky. And here is a video example using the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. This first clip is recorded just using the normal video function. And this one is recorded using the AI enhanced night mode. So the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra there was using some deep learning software from Blink AI in combination with the machine learning capabilities of the Snapdragon 888, meant it was able to elevate those low light conditions and show us that impressive night video mode. And that's the point, this is in video now in real time. Another area where machine learning can be applied is in video upscaling. Now normally if you upscale a video from 360p to 720p, you could just double the number of pixels. However, you're not adding anything to the picture, you're just doubling everything. And ultimately, if you keep on doubling it, you're going to get kind of artifacts and it's going to look blocky and there's certainly going to be a lack of quality. Now with machine learning, the neural network is trained on some high resolution photos and then shown the result when those photos are reduced or when the video is in high resolution, then the video is reduced. So it can learn what the high resolution picture was and what kind of low resolution picture is produced. And then it applies that technique in reverse. It sees the low resolution picture, says, ah, oh, well to create the high resolution picture, I need to do this. And that won't just be doubling the pixels, that means it'll be filling in the gaps in between those pixels so that the picture looks overall of a higher quality, better clarity, better sharpness, and so on. And so there you have it. So we've seen how the Snapdragon 88 contains that triple 14-bit ISP, that sixth generation AI engine, and in real time, it can apply machine learning algorithms to video that you are capturing. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. And if you're interested in my newsletter, go over to GaryExplains.com. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.